stand and sing. Uh, he keeps me singing. All five verses.
in your precious name, Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Again, we want to welcome each and every one to Old Slug. Anybody visiting for the very first time? Anybody? Okay. Well, we're just glad you're all here. Try to find out who's missing and prod them a little bit. Tell them to be here next Sunday or next Wednesday night. All right. Um, birthdays. Any birthdays since? Uh, Ma'am, I understand you have a birthday. You did. Well, the way you said that, I think I'm sorry, but anyway. <laughs> Come on up and stand right here. Right. Beverly, you can come help her. I'm not going to stand up too. I had a birthday. Well, come on. Charlie, he's just in a lot of pain. 
with his shoulders and also um, for Elena Coons who did get to come home last week from the accident. Uh, continue to pray for her for healing both physically and emotionally and for the boys and uh, for Nora, the little girl, the daughter too. So, But thank you all. I know you've been praying and I just appreciate it so much. Our family does. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right. Um, remember the family of Jimmy McClam? He's passed away. I think those arrangements are sometime today. Do you know what time? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. At Bethel. At Bethel. At Higgins Crossroads. All right. Any any other prayer requests? If not, we want to go to prayer at this time. And uh, Pastor, we do lose this prayer. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, as we bow before you this morning, we thank you first and foremost for the great God that you are in our lives. And many times you have blessed us over and over and over. And fathers, we have listened to all the requests made this morning. Our fathers, so many needs are represented by the folks that are here uh, with those in their lives and, and those they have made us aware of. And we pray that you would move and intervene in every situation. Our Father, for the couple have been married for 71 years, Father, and one of them is fixing to head home. Father, we pray that you would bless the entire family and then the many others who are recuperating from uh, bad accidents and surgeries and, and those many others, Lord, who are sick and, and Father, who have ailments and then still many others who desire prayer because of trouble or chaos in their lives. We, we want to lift you up and ask that you would intervene and move in every situation and may you be blessed and may you in turn bless others as well. And Father, we just give you the glory and praise in all of it. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Ready for some singing? Go ahead. For the first time that I'm aware of, Brother Danny Barber is going to sing for us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And Jesus said, where there are two or more gathered, I am there also. Yes. So I'm singing to him this morning. You just have to sit and be pleased. Oh uh -huh. 
see you today. Hope your week has been well. I've uh, been looking forward to coming back and sharing with you on this Sunday morning. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome all of those listening in through Facebook Live as well. And, and we have a lot of folks in our fellowship hall uh, that, that uh, we know. Uh, I just went and visited with them a little while ago. So, so we're glad to see you too. And I hope everybody is uh, ready to hear the Word of God today. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10, with this thought in mind, regaining the cutting edge. Regaining the cutting edge. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 10. If the iron be blunt, and he do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow before your holy and precious throne today, once again we ask your blessings upon the reading of your holy and precious word and upon the message this hour. May you be honored and glorified in everything that is said and done. May we as a church be edified and built up. And may if there is anyone Anywhere listening right now, Father, that needs a special touch from above, to the, needs to be reminded of your special love, or maybe needs to come to salvation on this day, I pray the Holy Spirit will lead in God and direct in all our lives. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have you ever felt like things just weren't going your way, no matter what you tried to do? You tried over and over again, but it just seemed like nothing was going your way. I'm reminded of the story of a school teacher who had a little class of kindergartners, and uh, one little boy asked for help in putting his boots on. And so she went over to the little boy for help, and she could see why. Those boots were so tight, and she struggled, and she tried with all her might to help him get his boots on, and by the time she did finally get the boots on, she was breaking out in a sweat. Well, imagine her dismay when she said, when he said rather, teacher, my boots were on the wrong feet. <laughs> she looked down and sure enough, they were on the wrong feet. And so just as hard as it was to put them on, it was hard to take them off. And she struggled to get them all off and then switch them to the other feet and put them back on. And boy, she was really exasperated by that time. But then imagine hearing him say, these are not my boots. <laughs> so she struggled to take them off again. And once she finally got them off, she was really fit to be tied. He said, these are my brother's boots. My mama made me wear them today. <laughs> she wanted to scream at him, why didn't you tell me? But she bit her tongue once again try with all her might to get those boots on her little student's feet. And as she finished, she sat down, whew, exasperated. He said, thank you, teacher. And she said, well, where's your mittens? And he said, they're in the toes of my boots. <laughs> oh, well. She was having one of those days, wasn't she? <clears throat> we come to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. And it speaks about a person having one of those days. He was trying to do things the hard way. But if only he would listen to wisdom. Notice what the scripture says again. If the iron be blunt, and he do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. We see in the scripture a tool that has become ineffective simply by being used over and over and over again, thereby becoming dull. Notice the tool could still be used. It still could be used to cut the wood, but only by applying excessive force. It had lost its cutting edge. Instead of stopping and taking the time to sharpen the edge, the person to whom this tool belonged to just
just kept using it and kept using it and kept using it over and over again until it finally become dull. And that would make for more extreme exertion to get the work accomplished and thereby eventually becoming ineffective. <coughs> you know, some folks just like doing things the hard way. They do things over and over and over again. They wish life could be better for them. They, they talk about, I wish my life could be better, but they continue doing the same things over and over and over again, making it hard for them, and doing the same things over and over and over again and hoping for different results. Somebody once said it is the definition of insanity. Huh? There's a better way of doing things than always doing them the hard way. You know, I heard a story one time about a man who challenged another man to a wood chopping contest that would last all day. He said, let's see who can chop the most wood by the end of the day. And so the challenger worked hard all day, barely taking a break just to get a sip of water and continue right on. The other man, however, took a leisurely lunch break and would take several breaks throughout the day. And at evening, the first man that had addressed the challenge to the other one become angry because he saw the other man had chopped much more wood than he did. And he asked the man as he went to them, I just don't get it. Every time I check, you were sitting down, you were taking a break, you were eating lunch, and here I was working all day long barely taking a break, and yet you chopped much more wood than I did. How is that possible? The winner said, what you didn't notice was every time I sat down, I was sharpening my axe. Friend, you can work and work and work and do the same thing over and over and over, and you'll get the same results if you don't change. There's some things that simply need to change. That's a good lesson for all of us. We all need to reflect on our own lives, and why are things so messed up? Why are things not working out like we desire them to be? We need to take time to sharpen our edge, to regain the cutting edge. And in order for us to do that, so we can be productive for the Lord. We're living in a day and time when things are certainly different than what we're accustomed to. For instance, schools are operating differently. How many of you that left school never dreamed you'd be back in school with your children, helping them doing their own work in your home through the computer, and you thought you were through all that stuff, and now here you are, very much involved in your children's lives because some are going to school and some are doing it at home, and it's just a different area in which we're used to operating. Department stores are operating differently. You will hardly ever go into a department store today and not see somebody with a mask on. Most everybody is required to wear, uh, wear these masks. Restaurants are operating differently. You walk into a restaurant, you're not sitting right beside people. There's another table across from you, and that table in between you is empty, and it's all spaced out in the restaurants. Businesses are operating differently. Most businesses require you to make uh, an appointment now to come in to and talk with someone, uh, just like the telephone company. You can't just walk in and, and try to buy a phone and you've got to make an appointment to go see these people. Even churches are operating differently. A lot of ministries are on hold all because of this pandemic. When, when we're used to doing things a certain way and then we have to change and readjust the way we're doing things, then we become used to the new way of doing things. And that's not always a good thing when it comes to our spiritual lives. Because of this pandemic that we are currently still in, even in our church world, we've been hindered by certain ministries continuing. Uh, we haven't heard our choir sing since March. And I'll tell you something, when our choir finally does get back together and sing, we're going to appreciate them a lot more, aren't we? Now, we love the special music. We love Danny singing this morning, all the people singing. But don't we love our choir as well? And we're all looking forward to when the choir can continue. But right now, because of being spaced close together in the choir loft, we're not singing as a choir. Not only that, Sunday school is not meeting. 
because we're in the rooms that are uh, chairs right beside each other, and most of our rooms are filled up, uh, we have asked for our Sunday school to just subside for a little while longer. Not only that, our Baptist men with food and the Baptist women uh, that are meeting with great numbers, we've asked them to stay on hold until we can get back together. And some folks are even refraining from coming to church. They've not been to church yet because they're apprehensive of being around other folks and just making sure they don't want to catch anything that's going on. And so we as a church need to be careful that we don't lose our cutting edge. huh? Sometimes we get so used to not doing, not going, not being, so much so it becomes habit. In fact, have you ever heard the phrase, uh, they become creatures of habit? That refers to a person who is done doing something continually a certain way, so much so it becomes second nature to them. And while we may have had some inactivity due to this COVID-19, we as Christians need to remain sharp. We need to make sure that we have a good cutting edge. It is no time to become dull, thereby becoming useless. Time spent in sharpening our edge is never a waste of time. Now, why should Christians sharpen up? Think about that. First of all, without the sharpness, a dull edge creates more work. You think about uh, that person chopping that tree down with an axe. And if that blade is dull, they just got to work harder and harder to try to get that tree to drop. But then, let's, let's make this scenario just a little closer to home. It takes more work, listen now, it takes more work to clean a house than to keep a house clean. Maybe that flew over your head, let me say it again. <clears throat> it takes more work to clean a house than to keep a house clean. How many know what I'm talking about? Huh? For instance, say you're cooking a meal, and some people, they'll, they'll wash dishes while they're cooking when they finish using that dish and so after they finish eating, they'll wash the remainder of the dishes and then they're done. But there are other people who will cook and lay the dishes on the countertop. They'll go breakfast, they'll go lunch, they'll go supper, they'll go snacks in between. They'll go three or four days until there's no more room on the countertop, there's no more dishes that can be found, and then they have to wash the dishes. It takes a lot more work to do that than if you would simply do it as you're doing. And so, yeah, without the sharpness, a dull edge creates more work. Without the sharpness, less is accomplished in the time you have to work. Because that blade is dull and that, that axeman is chopping that tree and because it's dull, it takes longer to cut the tree down. Well, the same thing is true in our lives. Sometimes we labor about something, we sweat. It seems like time runs out before we have a, a chance to finish our goal or our activity to complete our task. We're working hard, but time gets away from us. Without the sharpness, we can't work as long because of tiring out. You know, when that, that ax is chopping that tree, and he's well in the way, but because it's dull, he's going and going and going, and finally he, he just wears out, he's tired. You and I are exerting so much energy that literally we are wearing ourselves out. And the result is we become slower and slower, and because of exhaustion, we begin to make mistakes, and because of these mistakes, we eventually begin to think about quitting. The same is true in our spiritual lives. Think about it. Uh, a dull edge creates more work in our spiritual lives. We allow things to pile up in our minds. We know we want to take care of things, but we just let them sit there. One problem arises, and we decide, I'm not going to deal with it today. And that problem is still there, and so we keep on, and then another problem arises, and, well, I'm not going to deal with it today. And before long, we got problem after problem that just settles in our minds and on our hearts, and instead of solving our problems, we're running away from our problems, and that doesn't cause them to go away. They're still there. And it's a burden to our lives. As they pile on, we become overwhelmed. But you need to know this. You're going to have to deal with those problems sooner or later. And it's so much better to deal with them one at a time than when you're overwhelmed with a bunch of problems. Uh, once again, a dough edge accomplishes less in the time we have to work. 
because we put things off. Because we don't deal with them in the here and the now, we seem to run out of time with what we do decide to do. We're always on the go. It seems like there's never no time to complete our goals or activities. We're going and we're going until time is gone. A dull edge also causes us, once again, to be tired and want to quit. Sometimes it seems like we're just spinning our wheels. We're working, but we're spinning our wheels. We're getting nowhere. In the process, we become worn out, we become frazzled, and we simply decide, I'm going to quit. But let me challenge you to stay at it. The Bible also says in Proverbs 27, 17, that iron sharpens iron. And that's a reference to the companionship of one another. It is a wonderful thing to have someone that we can talk to to sharpen our iron with and to let them sharpen their iron with. And so I challenge you to find someone you can communicate with to sharpen iron with to keep us looking for God. Now, how is it that people lose their edge? Think about this. Well, one of the most simple ways uh, by you losing your edge is just like that axeman, well in the way, he never stops but keeps working and the axe naturally becomes dull because he takes no time to sharpen. He's just completely working. The only way that you and I can lose our edge this way is what we call burnout. We're constantly working. We're constantly going. We never take no time for ourselves to refresh ourselves. And before long, we simply burn out. Sometimes the edge becomes dull because it gets stuck into the dirt. Somebody's trying to chop a tree down and they get kind of close to the uh, root and the, and the trunk and before long they hit some of that dirt and that dirt, every time you hit it with the axe, dulls that blade. Spiritually speaking, we become dull when we get involved with the dirt of the world. When we allow the, the world's dirt to infiltrate our minds and infiltrate our hearts, then we start becoming dull on the Lord as well. Dirt will always dull the cutting edge. You know, they say temptations are sin, but that's not true. Right. Even Jesus was tempted, and yet he didn't sin. Right. It's the yielding to temptation. Yes. Here's an old phrase I learned a long time ago that would be good for all of us to adhere to. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop it from making a nest there. Yeah. Huh? You can't stop things from popping into your mind, but you can stop it from settling there if you'll simply get back in touch with the Heavenly Father uh -huh. and talk to Him. Uh, sometimes uh, the, dull, uh, the edge becomes dull because we hit an obstacle, maybe a rock. That axeman, he's, he's trying to cut down that root, and unknown to him, there's a rock in the ground. He hits that rock. I was mowing a neighbor's yard the other day, and I walked the yard over to make sure there was nothing in my lawnmower with get hung up on and sure enough I overlooked one little brick sticking up out of the grass that was covered up and that grass and my blade come in contact with one another and bent my blade and so you got to be careful because these obstacles can dull the edge what are we speaking of? many of us run through obstacles in life ever so often we call them the tragedies of our life we call them the great difficulties and because of this some folks become bitter and instead of turning to the Lord, they turn from the Lord. They get mad at God or they get mad at somebody else. And before long, they're out of here. Yeah, they don't right. want nothing to do with the Lord anymore. How do we regain the edge? If our edge has become dull, how do we regain it? Well, we have to go back to where we can get it sharpened again. I mean, if I was going to sharpen my axe, I would take it to my grinder or to a file and I would know that that is the place I need to take it to, to get it sharp. But speaking of our spiritual lives, what will sharpen us up? Well, the Holy Word of God is a good place to start. Amen. Amen. The Bible sharpens Amen. us up. Listen to what it says in Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the Bible sharpens us up. Mm -hmm. But if we want to continue <laughs> to stay sharp for God, then we also must include prayer. Not only the Word of God, but prayer sharpens us up. 
We need to remember that prayer gives us an audience with the holy, righteous God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm reminded of what James 5, <laughs> verse 16 says, the last part, where it says the effect, uh, effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Oh. If we only get into God's word and we only start praying, we will find ourselves sharpening up once again for the glory of God. But then let me throw this in. Love sharpens us up. Love sharpens us. Sometimes we become so mechanical in our ministries, in the things that we have been set up to do by the Lord's ministry in the church. We become mechanical and we need to remember everything we do needs to be operated by love. Right. By love. I once read about a man who couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. But he loved to sing even though he was off key. And besides that, he was always saying amen out loud when every time the preacher would preach. And so to all the rest of the congregation, he was disruptive. He was singing out loud, all key, and saying amen, preacher, amen, and disrupting all the service. Some of the church members thought that their services were becoming rather undignified because of this old man. So two or three of the more well-to-do members thought that he was just too crude for the congregation. And they appointed themselves to go talk with the old man. When they arrived at his house, they seen him out in the field plowing with his old mule. Though it's beneath their dignity, they finally walked out through the dusty field to the old timer. They said, Brother Jones, we want to talk to you about your singing. Not meaning any offense, but you just can't sing. <laughs> that went over pretty well, didn't it? We wish you would not try to sing so loudly because your singing is ruining the worship services. And about your amens. You ain't got to say amen all the time like that. We feel like it's being disruptive in the services of the church. The old farmer said, well, fellas, I'm sorry about that, but it's just when I get to look at these old clothes of mine that I got on and I think about the robe of righteousness that God's going to give me one day, I just can't help but shout and sing the glory down. Amen? And then when I see this old shack that I live in, it can fall down on me on any time. And, and then I realize that mansion on the hilltop God's got prepared for me, I just can't help from singing and shouting the glory down. You see this old hat I got on? It's got a couple holes in it. When I think about that crown of glory God's going to give me one day, I just have to shout out the name of Jesus, praise his name. And I, I feel like I feel like starting to shout and sing right now. And he did. <laughs> Those men left him right there in that field, shouting, singing the glory down. And as they left him, they looked at him in a different light. One of the men finally said, you know, his singing isn't all that bad. How do you look at people? How, how is your love for one another? When you look at someone else, are you constantly perceiving their faults? Or can you overlook that and <clears throat> love them as Jesus loves them? We got so many people that only see the faults in our lives. What would it be if somebody could just see the good points once in a while and magnify that? How is our love for one another? Do we have some sharpening up to do to love like Jesus wants us to love? But then what will be the results of our gaining our cutting edge back? I believe one of the results is our testimony will be sharper. Yes. We'll have a testimony that glorifies God in everything we do. Without question, one of the most sad, tragic things that ever happened to a Christian is when they lose their purpose for God. When they lose God as the priority in their life and they lose their passion for the things of God. They grow cold and they grow indifferent. We have a name for such people as this. We call them backsliders. Huh? You ever heard that name? I'm reminded of the story of a, a man who had quit going to church. He had become discouraged about some things that was going on and eventually dropped out. He was a dropout of the church. 
his Sunday school teacher come to visit with him. He was a godly man. He was concerned about the young man. So he went to visit him at his home, and as he knocked on the door, the young man opened the door, saw it was a Sunday school teacher, invited him in, and they both sat down by the fireplace where the young man had a fire going. School teacher, the Sunday school teacher never said a word. Instead, he, he grabbed uh, the iron poker and pulled out a couple of coals from the fire and just watched them. When he pulled them out, they were blazing red hot on fire. But as they sat there, neither one of them sat, said a word, and the longer they sat there, the coals started to lose their hotness. Uh -huh. And they started to cover over with whiteness and eventually became cold. What once were red hot coals burning, now were white cold coals. And the young man looked and said, you don't have to say a word, I'll be there Sunday morning. He got the message. And there's a lot of people that need that message today as well. You see, when we don't keep ourselves in the love of God, and we don't surround ourselves in God's word and in prayer, we don't saturate ourselves, we're going to be like that young man. And we're going to go cold. We're going to lose our edge. We're going to be dull when it comes to the things of the Lord. Another result of regaining our cutting edge is our effectiveness will be sharper. We'll have a passion once again for ministry. And we'll want to do things like we used to. I'm, I hear so many people that say, well, I used to be a preacher. I used to be a Sunday school teacher. I used to be a deacon. I used to be a choir member. I used to play an instrument in the church. Used to, used to, used to people. What happened? They grew cold. And they got out for the service of the Lord. I don't want to be a used to people. I want to still be on fire for my Lord doing what I can. And so by that, my effectiveness must be sharp. Uh, we want people to come to church, amen? But here's the key. We want them to do more than just come. We want them to become like Christ. And that's why we want to invite people in with our services, whether it's physically or through our Facebook Live. Not because we want the numbers, but because we want them to know Christ as we know Christ. And so they'll be affected as well. But then our fellowship will be sharper as well. We have a love for one another, as we ought to have. I'm reminded of the scripture in Hebrews, once again, chapter 10, verses 24 and 25 says this. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another in so much the more as you see the day approaching. No price is ever too great, and no time is ever wasted in regaining our cutting edge, getting back the sharpness that's we, that we once had for the glory of God. But then notice the last phrase of this verse. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Let's read that verse again. Ecclesiastes 10.10 10, If the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. So if the man's using that axe, cutting that tree, and he don't take the time to sharpen the axe, it's going to become dull, but he's still working. Now he's still got the tool, and his tool's still working, but he has to put more strength in. And eventually it's going to become so, so dull, it's going to become a sledgehammer rather than an axe. He's just going to splatter the tree. But wisdom is profitable to direct. In other words, we will be wise to learn to get our cutting edge back so we can stay sharp for God. This verse teaches us the advantage of preparation. One who readily sharpens his mind, his soul, his spirit with wisdom will achieve success. Do you feel as if you become dull in your life for God? That's a question we all need to ask. Do we desire to get that cutting edge back? Well, then don't neglect the sharpening of yourselves. Don't neglect the sharpening of yourself. Oh, you can still well away with the dull axe. 
You can still do things the hard way if you choose to. Or you can choose to take the time to sharpen your axe, learn from your mistakes, learn from experience, apply the wisdom to your lives, and you will achieve more in the time left we have here on this earth. I don't like to do things the hard way. Even as a young man, I always looked at others and the mistakes they made and tried to learn from that. I so said, I need to learn that that ain't the road I need to take. If it had helped me in my spiritual walk, I need to neglect that road. Many of us seem like for some reason or another have to learn it the hard way, though. I have never understood that. Not me. If I can learn from your mistakes, I'm better off. If you can learn from my mistakes, you'll be better off. Because we need to sharpen our axes. And to do that, we need to apply the wisdom that God gives us. Let's come to the altar today and ask God to sharpen our lives as he would have us to be. So we wouldn't be dull, but we would be sharp for the glory of God. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this message that has challenged us today. To be sharp, to keep our edges sharpened so that we would be a glory to you. We'll be effective in the ministry that you've addressed to our care. I pray your Holy Spirit is speaking to our hearts even now. In the fellowship hall or in our homes or here in our sanctuary, we would find the altar and we would ask you to help us in our daily walk to stay sharp for your glory. It is in Jesus' name. Heard the message. How would you respond? That's all. Awesome.
Appreciate you. God bless you. Have a great day and a great week. And, uh, if you're able to make it back uh, Wednesday, uh, we're still continuing in the book of Acts. Apostle Paul has had a, a extremely difficult life, and we're in the latter part of his life and talking about some things with him. And this week, he begins to get on a ship and heads into a storm called Eurachlodon. It's a very interesting passage of scripture, so I hope you can make it with us. All hearts and minds clear? All right, Brother Danny, would you close us in prayer?